That's that. That's not what we're going to be doing today. So what is the alternative? The alternative is this incredible method which I've developed and it took nine years to develop and now 20,000 people all around the world have been through it and, and it's improved their lives and now they're playing music because of it. And that's called the Ridley method. So we come to the point now where we've got to ask the question, well, what is the Ridley method? So I'm going to show you. I'm going to demonstrate something actually because the Ridley method is all based on one philosophical truth. So I'm going to play something and then I'm going to ask you guys to write me something in the comments. So if I play something like uh, this. How many people when you're looking at me do that think that looks really complicated? How many people when you, you know... How many people when you're looking at piano players play like this, you think, oh, crap, that's a bit complicated, right? Yes, Ron, thank you. Uh, yes, Dylan, Wolf, uh, Harrison, fantastic. So here is the big philosophical truth that the Ridley Method is all based on. And if you're taking notes, this is really the, the first thing to write down in big letters and put on your wall. The illusion of complexity is created by doing many simple things at the same time. I'm going to say that again because it's so important. The illusion of complexity, meaning the magic trick of this thing looking really complicated, is created. It's a magic trick that's created. How? By doing many simple things at the same time. Mm. So why is that important? Because what the Ridley Method is, is it's taking those simple things and it's putting them in a very specific order. And then what we do with the Ridley Method is we go in and we learn one tiny, simple, little step. And it's the only thing we learn. We focus on one thing. And it's a very small, simple step. And we work on it in isolation. And we master it. And then we go on to the next simple step. And we work on it and we master it in isolation. And then we go on to the next one. And then we start bringing these things together piece by piece by piece. Now, when we do that, it makes practice very simple because you're focusing on one thing. It also makes it very fast because you're not practicing 10 different things. You're practicing one tiny little micro step and it's very simple and it requires 10 minutes of daily practice. Not hours and hours and hours where we're trying to do all this different. No, it's 10 minutes. Boom, very focused. And it's also fun. And the reason it's fun is because any subject you've ever loved, you are good at it. You are making progress. Well, if you've got tiny step, tiny step, tiny step, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, Every time you sit down on this instrument, you're making progress. And by the way, if you've ever struggled with motivation in this subject, a lot of people have. If you struggle with motivation, give me a big me in the comments, right? Me. Exactly. How many people have had that, right? Well, motivation comes from the Latin word motare, which means to move. If you're motivated, you're moving. So by definition, if you're using these piano techniques and it takes you forever and you don't really get anywhere, well, you're not motivated. You're not moving. But if you've got a method where every single time you sit down and you're learning that next tiny step and it's oh, progress, progress, progress. By definition, you're motivated. You're in motion. So we have a way which is fast, fun, and simple. And that is the Ridley method. Now, I'm going to bring this to life. Rather than just describe, describe, I want to bring this to life and demonstrate this to you by taking that song Inception. And I'm going to go from level zero to level 10 and we're going to walk through these steps and the, the key steps to get there so let's say you're starting out i know a lot of you said that you were level zero um so if you're a level zero on piano let's say you're just starting where do we even begin well the good news is that pretty much any song can be played with just two fingers and it doesn't even matter which two you use i'm gonna use these two <laughs> now when we do this for inception this is going to sound like this going to the Grammys just yet but it did get us started and it gets us started really simply because learning how to play with two fingers is going to take you about two days of 10 minutes practice per day and everything I'm about to say is 10 minutes practice per day and already we've begun 
So what's the next step? The next step is gonna be adding one more finger and this is in the other hand. And again, right now it doesn't matter which finger you're using. So I'm gonna use this one. And when we add that, it's gonna sound like this. Now again, we're not gonna do the Grammys right now, but we've got progress. Because learning how to add one finger is gonna take you two or three days of 10 minutes practice per day. And we're off. So what's the next thing we're gonna add? The next thing we're gonna add is the pedal. And if you're taking notes, this is another thing to write down. If you wanna instantly make your music sound more professional and musical, simply add the pedal. Now, if you're on a real piano, this is gonna be the pedal that's on the right hand side. If you, if you have a keyboard, this is just the one that plugs in the back. And by the way, if you're just joining, uh, as part of the Valentine's special today, I am gonna be signing and giving away my piano to one lucky winner at the end of this. I'm gonna do a competition, everybody can win. And I'm also gonna throw in this pedal with it. So I'll sign that too. So, <laughs> so what's, what's this pedal do? Well, without the pedal, the piano sounds like this. With the pedal, it sounds like this. until we let go. It keeps on going, the note keeps on going. So why is that so interesting? Well, the reason that's so interesting is because when we add the pedal, it joins our notes together so we don't get this broken sound. And so if we just add the pedal to what we were playing before, it's gonna sound like this. see oh that's a bit more musical huh now learning how to add the pedal is only going to take you about three days of 10 minutes practice per day when it's the only thing you focus on right and we've got a bit of progress great so what's the next thing we're going to add well the next thing we're going to add is some notes that fit now for any piece of music there are some notes which fit and there are some notes which don't some sound good and some don't sound good now the greeks had a word for this they called it harmonia which meant agreement is where we get the word harmony, which means agreement. <laughs> and just like, you know, if people are in harmony, they agree, they get along. And also notes can be in harmony and they sound like they get along. They sound good together. So this is a subject which has been massively overcomplicated, like so many in traditional music education. And like so many things in music, that's pointless because you actually have a native sense of this. You have a natural sense of harmony. In fact, let me show you. I'm going to play a note. You write in the comments, yes, if it sounds good, no, if it doesn't sound good. So. Sounds good, right? Sounds like it belongs. Sounds like it goes together. It agrees. What about this one? Sounds good, right? Okay. What about this one? <laughs> you instantly can hear when something's not right. Let's take another one. Ah. Let's take another one. Nope. <laughs> and another one. Perfect. So you see, you've already got this sense of harmony. You don't need lots of Latin and Italian and, and complicated language and lots of symbols. This is a, 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 a three years of theory. You already have this natural sense of what sounds good and what doesn't. So the next step is going to be finding those notes that sound good and then pressing them in any random order with any finger. So I'm just gonna literally take this finger and then press those notes in any random order that I choose. And when we do, we start to make our own solo. So let's check it out. This is the only thing I'm gonna add. to just find those notes and play them with any old random finger it's going to take you between two and three weeks of 10 minutes practice per day but every day it's progress every day it's oh i'm getting better i'm getting better i'm getting better this is fun this is simple because i'm only focusing on one thing this is fast because i'm only focusing on one thing 
and we're off to the races. So what's the next thing we're going to add? Well, now we've learned some notes that fit. We're going to ch change from playing them with any old finger to playing them with some finger work. Now, finger work is a big fancy word, which simply means how do you twist and move your hand so that you can play fast and comfortable? You see, so far, let's say I want to go from here to here on the piano. I've just been using any old finger and it sounds a bit clumsy and inaccurate. And sometimes I hit the wrong notes and it's just not good enough. Now, finger work is the difference between that and then this. I sound like an octopus. <laughs> I sound like I've got 15 fingers. Now what I'm actually doing is I'm just twisting and turning and moving my hand like a pianist. And we're gonna come into this in secret two. I'm gonna take this step and I'm gonna break it down in secret two and we're gonna fix your hand and finger problems forever. But right now all you need to know is the next step is gonna be learning how to play those notes that fit with the right hand movement. And when we do, it's gonna sound something like this. starting to get somewhere. Now learning, as you're about to find out in secret number two, learning how to twist and turn your hands is gonna take you precisely three weeks of 10 minutes practice per day. And I'll be showing you exactly how you do that 